What's going on everyone? Tanner here and welcome back to another commentary vlog as I dubbed it in last week's video. I've got some incredible stuff to show you this week so let's get right into it. As you all know I've bought a ton of plants over the years and I tend to hang on to things that I think I may be able to use down the road. Planters are no exception. They are quite useful since I do so much with plants so why get rid of them? I selected a few from one of my bins and trimmed down two pieces of my trusty carbon fiber glass window screen mesh. You've seen me use this time and time again, but I also like to use it for my house plants as a way to minimize the amount of materials that can be flushed out of the pot's drainage holes when watered. After laying down some mesh, I dumped a bit of Lika into each planter. I find that the ones from Ikea are pretty inexpensive and quite accessible so that's what I'm using here. I'm using these to aid in nutrient retention and to help wick water up into the planter. From there I mixed up a bit of substrate using mostly peat moss and a bit of cactus soil. The mix itself doesn't really matter that much since it's only temporary, so I'm just mixing up a few things that I had laying around the house. So in no way is this the ideal mix for a mangrove. The substrate was then added and I planted the red mangroves from last week's video. Lastly I topped everything off with a bit of gravel. I'm doing this so that when I water the plants in a moment the soil stays in place. Next I put the planters into a Tupperware container and watered them. I thoroughly watered the plants and let the water drain out into the bin rather than the other way around so that the substrate would get as moist as possible. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with the mangroves just yet so I figured that this would be a good way to house them until I do. I believe that I'll likely incorporate them into a brackish setup but I'm not totally sure just yet. Let me know what you think I should do with them down in the comments section. If you remember we also got some large Amazon sword plants last week that need to go somewhere. Like the mangroves, I lined some planters with mesh. Then I added a layer of black gravel and some rinsed lika. I rinsed them this time around to remove debris since they're going in with my fish. The swords were planted and then I topped them off with some more gravel. Since I'm using primarily gravel for these plants, I definitely need to supplement. I've used flourish tabs from Seachem for years and they work fairly well. That said, I also have these vital tabs from H2O plants that I haven't used much just yet, so I figured I'd give them a try and I added a tab to each plant. From there the swords could finally be planted into my stock pond. My long term goal with this pond is to incorporate primarily emerged plant growth, but that's about as much as I've planned it thus far. Although I am thinking to stock it with some kind of small colorful fish, possibly platies, guppies, I really don't know. If this were your pond, let me know down in the comments what you would stock it with. Do you remember those lights that I got last week for the rack I just set up? Well I bought another one that's slightly different for underneath of the terrarium rack. Oh yeah, come to think of it, I never even showed you the completed terrarium shelf, did I? Well here's how it looks now. I've got everything stained and sealed up with polyurethane and I gotta say, I really like how it turned out. I just have to finish up the shelves on the bottom area here as well as make a few minor adjustments. Regardless, I think it really complements the terrariums well and matches with the overall aesthetic that I wanted to create. Like I said in previous videos, I'm also going to have to build a shelf for in front of the other window whenever time allows. Anyways, let's get this light installed on the rack. To do so, I simply put in some hooks and then zip tied the light onto them.
Like I said, we still have to put a shelf on the bottom, so I'm not really going to do much else with this rack today, but it's getting there. Wait till you see what kind of stuff I have planned for the bottom shelf here though, it's really cool so stay tuned. Now then, let's get into the meat of this video, the thing that you came here to see, the Rubber Ducky Isopods. In case you haven't heard of these before, they were newly discovered last year in the jungles of Thailand, and they are absolutely incredible. Last week, I asked if any of you could hook me up with these, and my man the Reptile Nerd came through for me. He directed me to a website called isopod.com that has a variety of awesome isopods, and I'll leave a link down in the video description. I'm not sure why I wasn't able to find this site on my own, but they had rubber ducky isopods in stock, so when the opportunity came about, you better believe that I seized it. I won't get into the care of these guys right now, but in case you're wondering, I'm setting them up in a temporary container with some tropical substrate and a bit of leaf litter until I have the chance to set them up in a more permanent enclosure, which should be in a few days. Something cool about these isopods, other than the fact that they look like a rubber ducky, which is really awesome, is that they grow fairly large at around 3 quarters of an inch long. Until you see them in person, you really won't know how cool they truly are. I was honestly astounded whenever I actually got to look at these things with my own two eyes. I'd seen them in pictures, videos, all that stuff, but whenever I saw them in person, it was just a totally different experience. And I didn't stop there, I also got some Kubaris SP Borneo. These are very similar to the rubber duckies, but they're completely grey. These ones are still pretty young, so they are quite small. However, as adults, they do get fairly large, being just shy of 3 quarters of an inch. So not as large as the duckies, but still a decent size. They're also not nearly as striking, but they are an awesome creature nonetheless. Lastly, I'll show you a few easter eggs for up and coming projects. First, let's take a look at these Blue Dream Neocaridina shrimp that I got from Lucas of LRB Aquatics. These shrimp are blue as blue can be, and these are from his B team, so they're not even the best that he has. I'll leave a link up to his channel and website down in the comments if you're curious to see what he's got going on. In my opinion, he's a serious gem to the aquarium hobby. Now that we have these shrimp, you better believe that we're going to be scaping up a tank just for them in the near future. I also treated myself for my birthday last weekend and bought a school of gold ring Tinwanai Danios. They're still super small, but seriously beautiful. I'll also be scaping a tank for them in the near future, so stay tuned. And that's what I've got for you all this week. As you can see, I've got a ton of cool projects all lined up and even more that I haven't shown yet. There's a ton of work cut out for me, but that's alright, that means that there's going to be no shortage of new and unique content on this channel. Also, I want to thank all of you who followed me on Instagram this past week. We gained almost 1,000 followers since then, which is the fastest growth I've seen to date. So thank you very much, and I hope you like what I've been posting on there. 
On that, if you enjoyed this video and haven't done so already, please give me a like down below. It definitely helps with what I'm doing, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for your continued support. Take care and peace.